Um, we're going to, I'd like to try to respond in general to um, some of the questions that you have asked. And so I, I see Ms. Oviat in the back. I, I, Lorelai, I'd like to ask you, she's our, our Planning and Community Development Director, working on an EIR right now, and also um, any possible regulations as far as the dispensaries go. And so I'd ask you to, to give folks a status update on where we are right now and the schedule for when you think we may come back for this item. I know you're all going to be um, very interested in that. And then um, I've got one, one response to one of the questions that was specifically directed at me and the, and the community of Rosamond. Um, and then I'll ask if any other board members want to make comments. So Ms. Oviat, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Laura Oviat. I am the Director of Planning and Natural Resources. Uh, it is actually not a someday thing when it will be before your board. It will be in for front of your board in September. So the courts also directed that we do a full environmental impact report. That environmental impact report, we already did a scoping meeting. If you go to our website, there is a link that shows the regulations that we are proposing as well as the possibility of a full ban. So there are two options. Uh, we will be releasing an EIR here in about a month along with a fiscal analysis that shows the amount of revenue that could be reaped from regulation as well as the implications of a ban. We will then go to the Planning Commission in August where people will be invited to give public testimony and then this will be before your board for public hearing in September, October. We'll have more than one hearing before we hear a decision from you, hopefully. I will be making a recommendation in July to the Planning Commission. However, in June, moving back in time, in June, I intend to uh, reach out to your board to set a special workshop where we can have a dialogue on the regulations we're bringing forward. I will defer to Mr. Nations on the legal aspects, but the moratorium is in place not because of public health and nuisance or any of these other conversations, but under a government code that allows us to stop permitting and stop businesses, not specifically this business, but any business from opening while we were going through a planning process. The environmental impact report has to look at a snapshot of impacts and therefore we needed to stop development for a period of time so that we could get our hands around what the cumulative impacts are and what the possibilities are. So that was the reason for the moratorium. I have not uh, interacted with this particular dispensary owner. I'll make sure that they have my card and uh, so that I can explain what the regulations are, what the pathway is. Finally, I'd like to comment, uh, given the moratorium, given your board's direction, and given uh, the time frame, the planning department will not entertain a conditional use permit and a determination of similar use and process that since it will trigger another EIR. Therefore, it is redundant and a burden on this dispensary to ask them to do that kind of CEQA analysis when we are already proceeding with that. Therefore, uh, you know, this is in Mr. Nation's uh, purview in regards to opening this after the moratorium. And uh, those are all the facts that I have at this time. Was there anything else you'd like me to address? No, I think that that covered everything in your shop. I really appreciate okay. it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Mr. Nations, I'm going to afford you an opportunity to respond um, to anything you'd like to. As, as alluded to in the presentations, we are in litigation with Ash's dispensary. They opened after the imposition of the moratorium, so they're in violation of county ordinance. Um, we have filed a motion for a preliminary injunction to enjoin them from operating in violation of the moratorium. Beyond that, I would prefer not to comment since we are in litigation with them. Thank okay. You. One, one thing I would like you to comment on, though, um, one of the speakers asked um, why we would um, why we would have an injunction against this particular dispensary and not I think they said ten in Rosamond and so could you speak to the situation not just in Rosamond but but countywide um, but specifically in that location please uh, most of the dispensaries operating in Rosamond are in violation of the moratorium as well and we are seeking similar legal relief against them the board did not authorize or allow that many dispensaries to open. There are a few that were open prior to the moratorium and they will be allowed to continue opening. But as to those that opened in violation of the moratorium, we are seeking legal recourse. 
Okay. Thank you, Mr. Nations. I see Supervisor Perez has punched in. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I want to say thank you to everybody who's come out today. I imagine some of you have traveled a, a good way to be here. And I am so grateful uh, for your um, educating this board about your personal experiences, about what it means for your life and the impacts that it can have on your life and that it is having on you. So I appreciate that. Uh, you guys have been caught in the crosshairs of an immensely complicated emerging issue. This board, before I ever joined the board, before three members up here joined the board, attempted to uh, pass a, an ordinance that would allow the functioning of these dispensaries for people like you. Uh, and that was shot down by the courts because we had not engaged in what you heard earlier is called an EIR, Environmental Impact Report. So. The court found that we did not comply with state law in trying to set up an ordinance that would give lawful users that are respectable and have, are going to a respectable business uh, to continue to get the medicine that you need. Uh, that was shut down and it sort of sent everything into a bit of a chaos uh, because the ordinance was found to be illegal. We're now in this circumstance with uh, a, ch a state law 64, which we know passed last year in California. Uh, it has left this board with limited options. And I am so sorry for the imposition on your personal life. Uh, your stories are compelling. Uh, I think you're being authentic. Uh, and I feel uh, responsible to be part of this solution that allows you to function, uh, to lawfully obtain the medicine that you need to treat your ailments. Uh, this board has been put in a very precarious position uh, because we have numerous dispensaries, as you can imagine, that open up one after another. Uh, they do not function, many of them, like respectable businesses. Many of them are in my district. I drive by multiple dispensaries on my way home. And I know there are many people like you that are frustrated about this reality because you're being lumped into the larger bad actors and players that are uh, out to make money are not interested in playing by the rules or having a reputable business over the long term, and you're suffering because of that. And I am so sorry. Uh, this board is moving rapidly to engage the environmental impact uh, realities. We cannot do any of this without that report. We were already shut down by the courts, as you know. So we are moving quickly. We are moving rapidly. Uh, I know this board is sympathetic to your issues as we've talked about these issues. I know that they care about you. I can say that with full confidence, uh, that we are w moving quickly uh, to resolve these issues, to consider the safety uh, matters. Uh, we have a sheriff uh, that is uh, giving us some input upon some of the challenges to his deputies <clears throat> excuse me, in trying to uh, regulate these places. It is immensely complicated. Uh, but we are moving quickly. And this is important. Uh, I want to uh, have a reputable uh, opportunity or a, a reputable uh, ordinance uh, if this board moves that direction that allows you guys uh, to get the medicine that you need but, but absolutely prioritizes public safety. And we have to demonstrate that that's possible. Uh, through uh, the proper regulation and the proper public safety enforcement. Otherwise, uh, it is going to continue to be very chaotic and very problematic uh, in many, many ways. So uh, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. Um, I would uh, ask our county council to uh, give us some input on what are some next steps for this group potentially. Uh, do they have no a recourse until June, September timeline? I think we should you know, give them some answers regarding their recourse moving forward. Uh, these, uh, these folks look desperate to me, and I hate to put them in further harm's way uh, by uh, not being able to inform them of what their uh, opportunities and remedies are before them. So I ask you to please be patient with us. We're moving as quickly as we can. We have guidelines we have to follow. Uh, but uh, I believe in my heart that this board cares about your condition and that they want to do the right thing. Uh, but we've had our hands tied in multiple ways uh, for things that are out of our control. So once again, thank you. I, I want to uh, help be an asset to you as we uh, move forward in resolving what are uh, new and very complex issues in a rapidly changing environment. So uh, thank you for being here. Supervisor Gleason. Thanks, Jay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it. There's a difference between um, looking amused and looking happy to see some, so many people from District 1 because it's not a regular 
event, so thank you all for being here. Uh, this board has uh, never taken a position against medical marijuana. We have not ever we have not ever made a statement. I know I have never made a statement saying denying the benefits and the reality and the science of medical marijuana. So rest assured that is not the issue that this board is dealing with. This board is dealing with a problem of regulation and consistency. What we're having to do and what we've tried to do is to be consistent all through Kern County on how we manage a um, poorly regulated, if regulated at all, industry. And now we have the state of California issuing brand new laws and regulations concerning this issue. And we're coming to trying to come to grips as quickly as we can with new emerging laws and an understanding that these businesses um, need regulation, need leadership, need to understand the, the rules, and we need to be able to enforce the rules when they don't follow the rules. So you put all those things together, and unfortunately right now, that's where you're at. You're just in a place right now where it's uncomfortable. I understand that uh, some persons have uh, business interests with this, but uh, I'm not willing to, um, to, uh, to provide an inconsistency in our theme of managing this unregulated business. So um, I think we are on, unfortunately, a course where we have to be on, which is a, which is a legal course. And with the uh, new um, EIR that's going to uh, come out in September, I think Laurel, I said September or sometime soon, uh, we're going to see changes. How those changes uh, unfold and how they manifest themselves, we don't know yet. But uh, that's the direction we're going in. I think most of you have had your questions answered. I'll be, I'll be up in the Kern River Valley on Thursday this week. I'll stop by, and if you have other questions, I'd be glad to sit down with you uh, and talk with you about them. So uh, those are my thoughts. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Supervisor Gleason. I, I, finally, I would suggest that all of you um, give your contact information to the planning department so you can be notified of when we're having the workshops and what the schedule is, et cetera, because your input is, is something that um, I know Ms. Oviat's very interested in, um, in having throughout the process. So thank you for being here. Mr. Medina, come on up.